Hmm. Agatha? When I entered the secret base, Agatha was there. What are you doing here? I saw her off to her house just a while ago. Well, I was just wondering if there was anything I could do. <laughs> Same. I bet they... Oh. Yeah, those bastards. Without delay, I decided to tell Agatha what I had come up with on my way here. Remember that rubber cord that Yorichan had found a while ago? I wonder if we could use that. Agatha grinned. Ooh. Is that what that thing's supposed to be? Are we gonna like slingshot ourselves? But we still need the glider. Anyway. Hmm. Can we really launch the glider with this? Is that what this thing is right here? This thing with the fucking like this thing? You like want like I don't I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. It was a rope made of a bunch of rubber bands put together. It is? Those are rubber bands? Look like rubber bands to me, but okay. It was quite long and had a metal ring attached right in the middle. It looked like it was designed to be attached to the glider's hook. Yorichan had found it in this warehouse. Through a little research, Agatha found out that it was used for launching gliders. Okay, but how? Apparently it relies on the force of the stretched rubber to sling them into the air. I can't quite imagine that. So it's basically like a slingshot, like I said. Someone else entered the dock. <laughs> That's my life. They all thought the same thing at the same time. Seems Asachan and Yorochan were thinking along the same lines as us. They thought there might be something we could that could be done and came here. <laughs> Even though we pretty much got driven into a corner. <laughs> really, though. I decided the time was right, so I pulled out my cell phone and showed it to everybody. I got a message from Katori earlier. I'll definitely come back. Everyone fixed their eyes on that short message in silence. No matter how much they stared at it, there was no other meaning hidden amongst those four words. Yeah, really though. Gotta be ready. If we just sit around helplessly doing nothing, she'll be mad, no doubt about it. When I said this, everyone chuckled as they remembered the time Katori flipped out. Alright, first, let's look this up a bit. Aga had gathered plenty of information from the internet. We all peered at the computer screen. Rubber cord towing, that's how it's called. Launching via a winch is called winch towing, while using a rubber cord is called rubber cord towing. Slingshot takeoff. I was wondering when they were going to call it that. The middle point of the long rubber cord is attached to the glider. Both its ends are pulled, and then the plane is hurled into the air. It resembles a slingshot. This slingshot doesn't shoot bullets, though, unlike the one used by Usopp from One Piece. Oh, yeah, because we all know that show. Can we really launch like this? YouTube! Agatha clicked on the video to open it. It was a clip showing a glider launched via rubber cord towing somewhere by a riverbed. It was a rather strange sight to us. First, the ring on the rubber cord was attached to the hook that we used for the winch rope. Then the glider was fixed in place while the cord was pulled by just human strength? A number of people were doing something that resembled a tug-of-war. When the cord was stretched to a certain extent, the pilot released the brake and... So low. Seeing the video, Yorochan groaned reflexively. The glider flew up one or two meters at best. It didn't even cover ten meters. Agaha read the explanation. Oh, okay, okay. Since our glider carries two people, we have to take their weight into account, too. There wouldn't even be enough acceleration. Even if we managed to fly up a little, getting above the clouds from there would be impossible. With that kind of acceleration, the glider would stall before it would even catch a thermal. I didn't mean to click that. <laughs> Agatha 
十分な高さまで上げようと思ったらよほど強力で十分な長さのゴムがないと不可能だな To do this, we also need a lot of manpower to pull it. It may be theoretically possible, but it's nearly unrealistic. And we don't have enough time to prepare such a cord now to begin with. I guess we can't launch like this after all. Oh, yeah? Do tell. Agaha began searching on the internet again. Okay, I'll leave this to you. I'll go look for the glider. Before we take it back, we have to find out where it was stored, right? Yup. Before we repossess that shit. I brought Masatsugu to school and told him what I was up to, but he flat out rejected my request. Please do something! I won't tell anyone that I heard this from you. Just please. All I asked from him was just to help me find where the confiscated glider was being stored. Since he's part of the student council, he can enter places ordinary students can't. Well, yeah. Well, you see, I stopped mid sentence. Bitch, please. No, I just hadn't sorted out my thought that far ahead, that's all. I could try to quickly think this through, but I can't describe these emotions right away. I can't say that I can't say it that well, but it's probably because if I didn't do this, I'd feel like I was betraying myself. I seriously did my best here. How could I not stay true, stay true to my own honest feelings? And back when I was flying with Katori, looking straight up at the sky together, our thoughts really became one. There's no way I could betray that moment. Masatsugu looked like he didn't quite get it, as he tilted his head to the side. And then, he sighed. <laughs> You're so cute! Really? Now it was my turn to be confused. Is that so? Masatsugu gave me a frustrated look as I nodded only half understanding what he was saying. Oh shit, it was that easy? Really? That's probably true. Huh. Just don't tell her. Oh shit! There she is. Uh, uh. <laughs> Why are you here? That's true, but it's summer vacation. Okay. She said in a jaded tone, "She's really a hard worker." What? Damn you. Where did that whole nice talk from just a moment ago go? <laughs> I don't know what Akari-san was thinking when she expressingly looking at us... Wait, when she was expressionlessly... Sorry. Looking at us whispering to each other. Oh yeah? What do you need to talk to me about, eh? No, we're not, but, uh, but anyway, what did you want to talk about? It's quite unusual for Akari-san to have some business with me. Yes, I un oh, uh, sorry. Yes, uh, are you done? Yes, I understand. That's what we agreed upon from the beginning. I'm the one who should apologize. I'm terribly sorry for all the trouble we've caused. Akari-san also took the responsibility for approving the Soaring Club of her own accord. And because Tapioca's a dick, right? Yeah. Kari-san said and looked out the window. Akari-san. 
She returned to her business-like attitude, turned around, and started walking down the hallway. However, she stopped after a few steps. She stood still with her back to us. She turned around once again and briskly walked back. Oh yeah? Like what? Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is and I don't care, but you know, they put it over there. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, why are you. She said in an irritated tone and turned back again. And this time she actually left. Thank you very much. I bowed deeply and completely dumbfounded. Why did she tell me that? The gym storeroom, huh? Come on, partner, let's go! <laughs> you know you want to be partners, don't lie. I went towards the sports ground, dragging the resisting Masatsugo along. Drug his ass. By the scruff of his neck. As expected, the gym storeroom was locked. I only did a quick inspection and took my leave. Well, at least we learned where it's being kept. Now we can get back, get it back if we needed to. Of course, it would be very risky. I hurried back to the secret base while thinking about this and that. As I was walking up a gentle hill road, I glanced towards the lake. Oh? The next moment I started running. Oh? Oh shit. It's the purple sky! Uh-oh. 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 I ran down the hill until I reached the runway. I placed both hands on my knees as I tried to catch my breath. My cell phone had been ringing for some time now. I answered it without checking who it was. Hello? Yeah, I see it. I was standing in the middle of the runway where nothing was obstructing my view, and I looked up at the sky. There it is, dude. The eastern sky was dyed purple-bluish, or bluish-purple, so whatever. To the west, the sky had the same orange color that Sunset always had. This is the sight we had been waiting for all this time. The sky was what had, uh, the sky we had been hoping and praying for. While I was gazing at that beautiful distant sunset, painted with the complex gradient from bluish-purple to deep vermilion, my body shivered. Delight, excitement, impatience, one by one, various emotions well up inside of me. Ah, shit, dude. Yeah, it's the sign. The morning glory is coming. Oh, no. Horrible timing. God damn it, dude. God damn it. Oh well, let's see how this fucking goes. <laughs> I'm sure this is gonna be a ridiculousness. Here we go. Okay. Agatha searched for other ways to launch besides a winch or a rubber cord. Wish she didn't find anything we could prepare right away. Even though the signs had come. Okay, I'm counting on you. While I was replying, I checked my phone for new messages. However, there weren't any. I hadn't heard from Katori since her last message. She should have talked with her father already. Since she hadn't contacted me, it probably meant they still hadn't come to any conclusions. But, I wrote Katori a message. The sign appeared just now. Tomorrow morning, the morning glory will come. She'll definitely come back. Believing in that, I pressed the send button. Asachan and Yorichan came back carrying big shopping bags. We decided to stay here tonight. I had the two of them go stock up for our stakeout. Yorichan made a hopeless expression. Agatha looked at me. I shook my head. She still hasn't contacted me. 
ひばりさんに頼んでみたらどうかなモーニンググローリーが来てる間だけこっちに連れてきてほしいって I'll wait a bit longer if I don't hear back I'll try that if that was what the, if that was the true sign the real thing will happen at dawn it only lasts two or three hours so even that would be much would be enough けどそれもグライダーが飛べたらの話よ期待もない Yeah, really, though. We need the glider plus a way to launch that shit. So, what the fuck are we gonna do? This is crazy. I'm like, okay, are they just gonna try it and hope for the best? Or something? Is some miracle fucking bullshit gonna come out of nowhere? How about we eat? I'm hungry. Asachan suggested to brighten up our gloomy mood. That's right. So, yeah, more. Before we noticed, our usual meal time had long since passed. Everyone grabbed whatever they liked rice balls, sandwiches, and such from the shopping bags. While waiting for her instant noodles, Agaha opened the rubber cord towing clip we saw earlier today. A large group of people pulled the cord, but the glider merely flew a few meters. And it was a very simple, light airframe. I can't imagine launching our two seater with this method after all. Everyone stared at the screen, half resigned. Oh, of course. Guess who shows up when we're eating every single goddamn time? <laughs> Before we noticed, Amane Senpai was standing behind us, peeking at the computer screen over Agatha's shoulder. Amane Senpai? When the heck did you get here? She put her helmet on her desk and answered while looking at the screen. <laughs> I'm a little hurt, okay? I am an adult, after all. We'd all been staring at the screen absentmindedly, so it seems we hadn't noticed her. Uh oh. Leave it to the genius to figure out a way, dude. She's gonna do it. She said in a genuinely interested way. So there are things even she doesn't know. She quickly started skimming through her materials Agatha had found on the net. Senpai's words stab my heart. When Mochizuki Amane says something is impossible, it is impossible. Well, the truth is, I told Amane Senpai about the broken winch. Amane Senpai looked over the materials about the rubber cord towing once again. This time she was serious. Is it too difficult after all? Senpai groaned while looking at the screen. I guess it's no good. She said as if she had just thought about it. And we suddenly realized something. Come to think of it, since so much had happened, we completely forgot to tell Amane about Katori. Senpai looked worried. Oh yeah, she didn't seem to have any serious injuries. She's alright. But after that, I told Senpai what happened after Katori got discharged. Nah, yeah, not yet. Senpai got worried again. I mean, yeah, of course we know why you're here. You saw that it was time, and you were ready. I thought Katori would Me too, me too. That means you gotta go with us, Amane. We've almost given up, though. It's the only way, dude. Asachan suddenly spoke up. Everyone then turned her, their attention to her. She explained this while making gestures with her hands. Basically, we would place a ramp on the runway, similar to those used in ski jumps, and the glider would be launched from it by the rubber cord. I mean, I kind of pictured it having a ramp anyways, but like, how big of a ramp are we talking? Mane Senpai shook her head. Well, 
すぐに失速してしまうジャンプ台を登るために勢いも犠牲にしてるしねダメですかジャンプ台を作るのは今すぐ取り掛かればギリギリいけなくもないかなかなり無茶だけどあは。So we go find a cliff and we fly that shit off a cliff, right? No, is that.、Mm -mm, that doesn't seem realistic either. If there isn't a strong lift right at the end of the ramp, jump ramp, it would be kind of pointless. Everyone was a deep thought. If only there was, I don't know, a bunch of windmills or something nearby. I don't know. That or launching it from the cliff. That, would, that could work. I said that half in despair, but Amana Senpai tapped her palm with her fist, having a sudden realization. Uh oh. I knew it. I knew she was going to say that's a good idea. Everyone looked at her in surprise. Besides, even if we took off like that, if we can't ascend, towards, or ascend afterwards, there's no point, right? We would accelerate while falling from the cliff, but if we couldn't get any lift after that, ascending would be impossible. It would be fine if the glider was still at a reasonably high altitude after accelerating, but, but, af, but for that, we would need a suitably tall cliff. It's absurd, after all. However, Senpai. <laughs> yeah, let's do that! Yeah, I, I, it's confirmed, we're doing that. She was nodding to herself as if she had decided it. Uh oh, here we go. Senpai took the paper and pen from Asachan and started drawing something extremely vigorously. The white sheet of paper got covered by formulas and drawings in no time. Asachan handed her another sheet of paper as Senpai asked without even raising her head. Yurichan grabbed, grabbed a bundle of paper and tossed it down in front of Senpai. That didn't register with her, but she readily started using the new paper. That's how she is when she fully concentrates on something. This was exactly like the first time I met her when she was staring at the drawing board. When she's like this, she'll even forget about hunger, even though she's quite a big eater. <laughs> And Yoru was there to help confirm. Yuruchan peeked at the formula Senpai was writing and nodded in agreement. Then. Oh? Saying that, she sat down next to Senpai and began similar calculations. We were shocked when we saw that. Huh? You're gonna help? Scary! We couldn't keep up with this, so we just watched them completely dumbfounded. They're master architects. They must hurry, though. We're running out of time here, people! We also don't even have the goddamn glider yet. <laughs> the sound of two pens scribbling on paper was resounding、uh, almost with a single, without a single pause. Both the Mane Senpai and Yorichan continued writing in silence. It almost looked like they were communicating in an entirely different language. We, that is Agaha, Asachan, and I, moved a bit back and discussed another issue. According to the information from Akari san, the glider is in the gym store. There's one solid lock. It's not something you could break easily. Yeah, that fart. Whether we can take off without the winch or not, we weren't worried about that anymore. When Amana Senpai gets serious, nothing is impossible. Now, the only issue is how to recover the, recover the glider. Yeah, this time it's a bit. If what we're trying to do, to do goes badly, it could involve, even involve the police. Since we were students, the punishment probably would have been resolved without the school, within the school. That wouldn't be the case for Anchan. Everyone was already prepared to be punished by the school. If there was a way to fly, we'd do it. That's, all, that's how we all felt. We could transport it like we did before. There's a bicycle with a wagon attached at the grocery shop in the Kazami shopping district. It would be difficult, but we could load the disassembled glider onto the cart and transport it with one person pedaling and a few pushing from behind. 
The problem is that we have to do this without being found out by the teachers. Breaking lock, lock will be noisy. They'd definitely notice if we did that. She wants to pick that shit? Nah, that's wrong. It only works like that in manga. While we were discussing various plans, little by little we started to feel that it was, that, that it was possible. We would fly above the morning glory very soon. The glider was confiscated and the winch was broken. For a moment we thought everything was over. Even so, there is still something missing. I still haven't heard from Katori. I looked at the clock. It's starting to get a late. It's starting to get late tonight. There was still time until the crucial moment, but to think that it would it would take her so long. I checked my cell phone anxiously. Yeah, she did read my message, right? Couldn't believe she'd remain quiet if she knew that the signs had appeared. <laughs> That's because she acts like a kid, as I replied while laughing. My phone rang. Noise. It wasn't a message, but a call. Hello? Oh, hello. Kanako san? You don't say. Wait, what? Something to give to me? Uh oh. That could be bad or could be good. I don't know. Yeah, I'll be right there. I closed my phone and stood up. I'll be right back. Uh oh. Breathing heavily, I was running up the hill. Why did Hibari san come? Katori isn't with her? What did she want to give me? I was out of breath, but I kept running, urged by a bad premonition. <sighs> Suddenly, the cell phone in my pocket signaled that I got a message. <sighs> huh? I stopped and checked my phone. It was from Katori. The message had no title. What? I hesitated for a moment, then I opened the message. I'm sorry I didn't call, but if I talked to you now, I'd probably lose my resolve. Resolve? My hands trembled and I almost dropped my phone. I grasped it with both hands as I continued reading. I talked with my father and decided to go back to Tokyo. I'm going to quit school by the end of the summer break. I really wanted to stay in Kazagara, but I can't keep making my parents worry like this. After reading that, I blinked my eyes. I was shocked, but at the same time, I knew like so that something like this could happen. Spending this past year with you guys was really fun. It was really precious to me. I wish I had made a photo album. I'm sorry that I caused so much trouble for you all. Please don't mind me and make sure you fly above the morning glory. That's the only thing I want right now. And then? Thank you for loving me, Aoi. I won't forget you even when I return to Tokyo. The message ended there. What the hell? My shaking hands were squeezing the phone tightly. I heard its plastic casing creaking. I came to my senses right away and called Katori. Uh, she turned her phone off or some shit. Not cool. Why? Why are you doing this, Katori? I shouted unintentionally. Assaulted by overwhelming depression, I almost threw my phone down on the ground. But I got a hold of myself and called a different number. Come on, answer! After calling plenty of times, probably more than 20, someone finally answered. Katori! Katori! Hearing Katori's voice after what I felt like ages, I felt relieved. I had, I I had called Hibari-san's home. Since Katori answered the phone, it means she's still there. I read your email. What's going on? Huh? My mind went blank for a moment. Those few words were enough to answer the question that was stirring my emotions so much. How is she? Is something serious? Is it something serious? This better not be some bullshit ploy she's pulling just to get you to go home. That'd be some bullshit, man. I 
父さんとお母さんを悲しませちゃったから私がこんな体になっちゃったせいで家族をめちゃくちゃにしちゃったから That's that's not true. I wanted to say that reflexively, but words like those wouldn't console her right now. But then you. Could you really live like that? After quitting school and returning home? Katori didn't say anything. After a short silence, she sighed. But you still have something left to do, right? One really big thing? Did you read the message? The signs have appeared. It will come in just a few hours. The morning glory! No, it isn't! But you can fly now, and by yourself at that! I mean, technically, no one can technically fly them fly by themselves. They need somebody to launch their ass at least, right? Katori, I couldn't believe it. It's like she was denying everything we have done together up until now, as if all those happy, fun moments had never happened. It felt so frustrating and miserable that it almost brought me to tears. Something like that is not enough at all. Tears of vexation were mixed with my voice. Before I noticed, I had started crying. She laughed a little as she said this. I could tell she was pretending to be strong with all her might. Or perhaps that really was the last, the one last thing she wished for. I realized she had hung up. Oh man. This is some heart wrenching shit right here, dude. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. Okay, Nasai. Nah, I'm fine. Where's Abari san? Okay. When I entered Katori's room, Abari san was packing. One look at my face told Abari san that I already knew the circumstances. She quietly closed a cardboard box packed with Katori's textbooks. Abari san muttered as she looked at the few card small cardboard boxes that contained all of Kotori's belongings. Most of them were filled with clothes and everyday items, and the rest was test with textbooks. Aside from the stuffed toys that had been on the bed, Kotori didn't have a lot of personal stuff. She said that if she had too much stuff, it would get in the way. Abari san had a sad expression. I understood her feelings. Having only a few things made Kotori's very existence itself seem very small. Hibari san sunk into silence and her eyes became clouded with tears. Thank 
小鳥ちゃんがグライダーから降りてくるのを見た時心臓が止まるかと思ったわでも小鳥ちゃんは飛んだんですよね Yeah, she wasn't afraid at all. Even I was surprised by that. She was slightly nervous, but she never showed a hint of fear in the sky. Saying that, she closed her eyes. Those words sounded like a prayer, a wish for them to be true. Your mother isn't doing so well? See, she's just worried and making herself not feel good. Some bullshit. It's one of those things where they get all depressed and stress out just so you'll feel bad for them. She's that kind of person. I know it! I see. Considering Katori's condition, I'm sure her mother had much more worries than, the, than most parents. So to hear about an accident and one involving a glider at that must have been a huge shock. Isn't there any way for Katori to stay here? To avoid going as far as having to quit her school? Or whatever, her quit school? I got carried away by my emotions and my tone became rougher. Hibari-san quietly shook her head. But she has things she wants to do! What's gonna happen with her later? With her entire future? Telling Hibari-san this won't change anything. But I couldn't help saying it. An unpleasant silence surrounded us. Suddenly a duck peeked in through a little entrance at the bottom of the door. Fuck it, duck. Quack. Quack. Hat entered the room and waddled over to Hibari-san's feet. Hibari-san leaned over and stroked Hat's back. Quack. Tori hasn't come back, so he's been searching the dorm for her. Hat has always been making rounds around the dorm on days when Katori was late coming home. No need to worry about this guy. He might get lonely, but even if you left him alone, he'd just keep on living and looking for food at his own convenience. He's a fucking duck. Habari-san's petting got Hat into a good mood. What's going to happen with Katori now? Can I see her one more time before that? Please, Habari-san. Please let me see her. Habari-san stopped petting Hat, got up, and took something out of her bag. It was Isuka-san's flight log. Huh. Uh, uh, yeah. With a puzzled expression, Hibari-san handed me one more thing. What is this? Oh, it was a paper airplane. A plain, ordinary paper airplane. I immediately unfolded it, but there wasn't anything written on the paper. No. Okay. I cast my eyes down, and Hibari-san looked at me with concern. She said apologetically and left. I was frozen in place for a moment. The fatigue suddenly overwhelmed me. I had no willpower to fight it. I sat on the bed. My eyes wandered to Iska-san's flight log that I just received. She said it's not something she should have anymore. From Katori, that everything begun with that notebook. 
It was because she found it in this room that she discovered the glider and flew herself. Returning it basically means meant that she had already decided to return home. No, to throw it all away, her feelings for the sky. I turned the pages to see if she had left a message anywhere or somewhere, but there wasn't anything. It looked as it did before. I glanced at the last page, the things I want to do list. When I look at it now, some ridiculous things were written here. Skip school. She was so serious about doing this. I remember it was like yesterday. Like it was yesterday. Only the topmost item, fly through the passage of clouds, was left unchecked. Even though that could happen tonight. You're telling me, Kaneko. Hearing an unexpected voice, I raised my head. kanaka san was standing in the doorway. Her frustrated expression matched her words. She'd probably overheard my conversation with Habari-san. Kanako-san came into the room and sat beside me. She picked up hat and put him on her lap. The fuck? What does it have to do with the duck? Huh? Uh, uh, okay. Huh? <laughs> I had no idea why Kanako-san started talking about parakeets, but I just kept quiet and listened. あの時、一匹だけじゃ寂しいだろって。あは。私も早速見に行ったわけよ。いやあ、あの時は天使上がったな。まだ子供だって言うからさ。はあ。でさ、見ちゃったわけ。羽を切るところ。Uh -huh. uh -huh. Clipping the wings? Kanako-san took a hold of Hat's wings and flapped them. Yeah, this is so they can't fly as high or whatever, right? Why would you... Oh, sorry. I thought you were still talking. <laughs> I feel bad for the parakeet, so I said, Fuck you, cousin. That's pretty sad. What kind of reason? Damn, she said all that that fast? Okay. Exactly. I hadn't seen them recently, but in the past I've seen flyers for missing parakeets that were similar to the ones for missing dogs. So you're 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 comparing Katori to a parakeet, basically, is what it sounds like. So take these clipped wings and learn to fly in my glider so free. I see. I had no idea keeping a parakeet involved. Something like that. That so-called clipping the wings sounded cruel, but I guess it might be the same as a collar for a dog. For the, for the parakeet, right? There are probably some that are happier that, that way and some that aren't. That's right. She put a hat on the floor while mentioning that he couldn't fly to begin with, then she stood up. Yeah, it would be nice, wouldn't it? She said with a troubled expression and walked out of the room. Parakeet's feelings, huh? I can at least look up at you. Are those Katori's true feelings? Even if it was, was that all she felt? I don't know. At any rate, it seems that like Katori had already decided her future.
So now what? Where does that leave us, man? I'm confused! あ、<笑> Yeah, have faith in Aoi forever. Hi. Hi. Ah, don't be that dirty Chocolate. Chocolate. Ah, hi, hi, Oh shit. Yoru-chan acknowledges Amane's genius. Nice. どうなの行けそう。ええ、多分。あの人も外でちょうどいい場所を見つけてきてくれたら。ただ、まだ裏付けは完璧じゃないわ。休憩終わり。もう一頑張り。One more time. あ、あ、おい先輩。before I noticed, I had somehow returned to the secret base where everyone was waiting. Agaha ran up to me as soon as she noticed me. <laughs> Not so good. Uh, uh oh. I said nothing and handed her her Iska-san's Iska flight log. She said she shouldn't have this anymore. It was decided that she will quit school during summer vacation. Katori's mother collapsed when she heard about the accident. She said she doesn't want to worry her parents anymore, and that she already had enough fun. As I spoke, I could almost feel tears welling up in my eyes. I took a deep breath to pull myself together. Where's Amana Senpai? I considered giving Iska-san's flight log to her. It wasn't something I should be holding on to. Ah, okay. I'll go look for her. Strong wind was blowing outside. The shape of Windmill Hill makes the wind gain strength here, but that's not the only reason. When the morning glory comes, the airstream becomes turbulent and strong winds blow. When I looked at the sky, I still couldn't see those clouds, but I was certain it was coming. I sat down on the grass. I told them I went to look for Amane Senpai, but it was a lie. I just couldn't bear to stay there, so I went outside. The grass rustled noisily as the wind blew up the hill. This is where it all began. When I returned home after I couldn't ride my bicycle anymore, the first place I dropped by was this hill, and I met Katori here. She was stuck here after her wheelchair got a flat tire and I could help her. That's how it all started. A year has passed since then. We were living together as pals aiming for the sky together. We quarreled a lot, yet we always looked up at the same sky. Please don't involve her in the dreams of normal people like yourselves. Even though he has no idea what Katori feels when, he, when she looks up at the sky? Fuck that! Unacceptable. We've already seen this. Do we have to? I'm not. I'm not gonna read all this or watch this all again. This is when she was babbling about wanting to go to the sky. Get, get back the freedom. We just heard that. That was not that long ago. If she returns to her parents' home, will she really find happiness? Even though she will be giving up on her dreams and abandoning her own future, I don't think so. I want to bring her back right now, but I don't know if I if that would ruin Katori's family. This is our family's problem. But if I don't return now, this time my family will... I don't want that either. Katori probably thought she had to choose between the Soaring Club and her family. With much regret and sadness, she chose her family in the end. Even so, I want her to come back. Although I guess that's just me being selfish. I cast my gaze at the paper airplane that I received, along with Iska-san's flight log. It was a perfectly ordinary paper airplane. It hasn't been folded in a special way, and nothing was written on it. She might have given up on flying, but she still yearns for the sky. Was it that kind of message? I threw the paper airplane. It glided through the night sky smoothly. Luckily, it avoided the headwind and flew towards the bottom of the hill. 
eventually disappearing into the darkness. Litterer! It flies well. Only Katori could have made it. As I was admiring it, I saw someone walking up the hill. It was Amane Senpai. What up, girl? She was holding a white paper airplane in her hand. Hey, look. It's Destiny. She came over to me and gazed over at the lake stretching at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. Is that so? You're being a little bitch right now. What's wrong? <laughs> I just don't know. What's the right thing to do? I complained reflexively, and Amana Senpai looked at me with a troubled expression. I still hadn't told her about Katori. She'd be confused if I suddenly blurted out something like that. Sorry, I said something weird. <sighs> Forget it. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, dude, if you want to fly, you go fly. Listen to your heart. Uh, uh. When Senpai started re reciting those words like a poem, I looked up at her blankly. Oh, shit. Yeah, seems like it. She probably was listening to a lot of DHT back then, so you know, listen to your heart. <laughs> she said slightly embarrassed and handed me the paper airplane she picked up. <laughs> Senpai got up and headed back to the secret base. As I stared vacantly at her retreating figure, I got taken aback. Suddenly, a memory from back then flashed in my head. When I met Katori for the first time here. Dun dun dun! A white paper airplane had f gently flown over my head. It looked as if almost one of the windmill blades broke off and was flying. I picked it up and climbed the slope, and there. And there. was a Katori chan! Them legs, though! I met her. A young girl who still had an air of innocence about her, sitting in a wheelchair. She was staring wistfully at the sky, running through her hair, and was flustering. I think all this is from the beginning. It looked like a flawless painting. I think that's all dialogue from the very beginning of the game. So it got to you. As she said that, tears welled up in her eyes. It got to you. She was the one who threw the airplane. What did she say back then? And when someone who received my SOS came here. Uh huh. I remember. Do you remember? It was only at the beginning of the fucking month. SOS. I trembled. I looked at the perfectly plain eight paper. Oh, I get what he's thinking now. He's thinking her airplane is a sign. Come save me again, like day one. Got it. Could this be an SOS? Was this Katori's call for help? Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I'm interpreting it just like like this just because I want to see her so badly. However, once I scratch my ear, I'll read the next line. If it was an SOS, I'll be too late! I jumped to my feet and ran in the opposite direction of the secret base. The opposite direction? While I was running, I picked up picked a number on my cell phone. Can I leave recovering the glider to you? I'm off to get Katori. Agatha? <laughs> now you're talking, boy. That's the plan, baby. As soon as I hung up, I called Anchan. Come on, Anchan, pick up. No good, he's not answering. I hung up and made another call. Sorry for calling so late. It's me, Manase. 
Is, is Katori there? I asked while running and breathing heavily. Hibari was ominously silent. You lie! Wasn't he supposed to come tomorrow? When was this? I see. I got it. When I was about to hang up, I remembered there was something else I wanted to tell her. Could you come here now? Yes. I want, to, I want you to see what Katori was aiming for, please. Whether Katori decides to fly or not, at the very least I wanted to show Hibari on the morning glory. I wanted her to see what Katori, what all of us were aiming for. Okay. Still no luck. There was no sign of Anchan picking up the phone. I was thinking of getting him to use his car. Taxis don't run at this hour in this countryside. Guess I have no choice. It's bike time! You know it! I left a message on Anchan's answering machine just in case. Then I put a hand on my partner that I had maintained. I'm counting on you, buddy. Time to break your knee, boy. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. あ、ただいま。ちょうどいいところに。どうでしたか。あ、バッチリだ。どうなると、あとはグライダーですね。そっちは私が行ってくるわ。朝ちゃんは発行準備の方お願い。人手がいるから適当に集めてきて。あ、あとライトも必要だ。懐中電灯か何かを一緒に集めてくれ。やじゃです。ここからが少年場よ。忙しくなるぞ。Here we go, baby. I sprinted on my bicycle down the road alongside the lake. I won't be riding any more than 100 kilometers. There's no need to preserve my strength. My goal was 30 kilometers away at most. I couldn't go at my fastest speed, but I could maintain a fairly quick pace. However, if I don't manage to catch Katori there, I won't be able to follow them anymore. The place in question was the Sazami, Sazanami Bridge, located south of here. A huge bridge across the lake that goes through, the small, through a small island on its way, resembling a surging wave. It's a beautiful sight, but more importantly, it's very convenient, so all cars heading for Tokyo will certainly follow that route. I calculated how much time I had left. The car shouldn't take more than an hour to get from Abari-san's house to the bridge. It was late at night, so they could be speeding, but I doubt Katori's father would drive dangerously while his, he is with his daughter. I bet he is obeying the speed limit and driving safely instead. From Flying Fish Manor, it was only about 30 kilometers to the bridge, much closer than from Habari-san's house. If I hurry, I should, be able, I should still be able to catch up with them. I stepped on the pedals with all my strength. <笑>何やってたんだよ。これ用意してたら遅くなっちゃって。ゲッカスバナ。ゲッカスバナ。ゲッカスバナ。ゲッカスバナ。ゲッカスバナ。ゲッカスバナ。ゲッカスバナ。
あさちゃん人でこれだけで足りるのなんだったらもっと呼べるけど本当ですかできればあと10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10もあるのに10ソアリング部がついに飛ぶって言ったらみんな来ると思うよそうなんですかみんな結果を期待してたからねすごいことをやろうとしてるみたいだって yeah, we're gonna do something awesome, dude. うんうんやっぱロマンがあるもんね空飛ぶのってみんな頑張ってたから<笑>みなさん<笑> Don't cry, Asa. It's okay. Ma, ma, si, Akari chan? Go me, nete ta? Of course, of course she was up late. Of course she was. Uh, so, so, re. Sashi ga ii ne. Well, sake wa onoshi. Kase ga don don tsuyoku natte. Ito wa keisan shita ijo da na. Anmari fuusoku na ari sumiru to, kaette riku ga muzikashi ku naru nja. That's not logical, but I get it.